Tommy Homestead and welcome to my channel. In this video, uh, President Nelson is at it again. He's talking to more uh, leaders throughout the world. Uh, this time these are religious leaders. And um, it's very interesting. I find it very, very interesting because uh, if you haven't already, you need to check out this video that I did. President Russell M. Nelson, lots of world leaders, political kingdom of God, Council of 50, where I talk about how it seems like in some kind of way, maybe it's just the initial phases. It feels like the church is like really starting to establish many, many uh, relationships with different um, political leaders, religious leaders, leaders of different groups like the NAACP. Right. I, I've, I speculated, like, could this be the comeback of the council of 50? Not that it would be a council of 50 people like it was in the beginning, but Basically, solidifying ties with different groups in preparation for the second coming because the church uh, is going to bring forth the kingdom, the political kingdom of God, right? Uh, we just we just watched or we just did a video today. Um, I actually recorded it last night and scheduled it for today. Let me pull it up here. I just did this video, John Taylor. Uh, the church is the introduction to the kingdom of God. And it sure does look like that's what's happening right now. <laughs> it seems like the church is introducing to the world the kingdom of God. Uh, while we're here on this, um, on my homepage, I just want to feature just really quick the channels that I feature. Uh, make sure to check all of them out. They're all good. Right now, I'm really promoting uh, channels from the sisters in the church that want to do YouTube channels because of this last conference in President Kimball's prophecy that the women of the church would bring in unprecedented amounts of people into the church, uh, especially the good women of the world that don't can't find goodness anymore. So if you're one of these sisters that are thinking about it, please, please do so. I'll do an interview with you. Uh, to help you get started, to promote the channel. But anyway, the most recent uh, person that I interviewed was Jojo, the joyous genealogist. She has a genealogy channel. Her subscribers went way up. Uh, I'm about to interview Megan E eh, uh, next week. Uh, we did uh, Rebecca Lines. She has two channels. One is about Come Follow Me. The other one is about The Second Coming. Tyler Cragen, he's kind of been with me since the beginning. He started a channel. Uh, he's doing pretty well. Uh, he does Second Coming content. And so does uh, Troy Abels with the Last Dispensation channel. So these are two good people, these two guys with really good spirits. Uh, so are all these sisters at the church. We got Young Mothers in Christ. She's focusing mostly on like being a young mother, raising children um, of one heart. She has a LDS channel. Right now she's going through President Nelson's talks, all of his talks since he became president of the church. The Sunday Family Adventures, uh, I'm still, I'm still, I think, looking to do an interview with them, but they have a family channel and they want to do more gospel content. Uh, CC, Different and Happy. Um, <clears throat> well, I don't know if that's like the full name. I may have cut it off, but uh, she is in Australia and she she's like doing... Um, She's done like some health things, like word of wisdom things, but she's doing an LDS channel, Forever Connections. Uh, she's just kind of barely starting. Her channel got interrupted by COVID, but now she's back. And so check her out. Betty Horn, I'm going to interview her again. I interviewed her in the very beginning of the channel, but we're going to do another interview. Uh, she was a member of the Tabernacle Choir. And she follows all the same stuff that all of us do here on the channel. Uh, El Alvarez D, my friend from Spain. Uh, he has a channel. He, he just collects a bunch of like good quotes and stuff and puts it on his channel. He's great. And then Consider the Truth. I've done an interview with him way back in the beginning of the channel. Uh, he does good work as well. So make sure to check out these channels. Uh, subscribe. You're going to get good content. Okay, so um, I just find it, I find it so interesting. We did this video uh, talking about all the different people that I could find, like the main people that President Nelson has been meeting with, the Pope, leaders in the Islamic world, leaders in the Sikh world, so on and so forth. We covered this. This is uh, Robert uh, Adams. And um, 
he is a critical relationship for the church and a, kind of like a bridge uh, between the church and the world of Judaism. He's played a big role in helping the church connect with Judaism uh, and in Israel. Uh, so anyway, I want to go over this article. I haven't read it yet. I, I want to read it raw. Uh, this is this is incredible. Okay, so here you have here it is. It's President Nelson. They're in their like that their council room or their conference room. I've noticed that whenever he meets with leaders this is the setup. He sits, like if you're facing him, he sits on the far left and then President Oaks in the middle and then Henry B. Eyring on the right. And I think they do this because so that he can sit closer to the visitor or the guest. I don't know if like maybe during their regular um, meetings with just the, the first presidency and the Quorum of the Twelve, if maybe he like sits in the middle, but at the very least, when he's meeting with other people, he's, he sits right here. And I, I don't know. I think it's probably so that he can be closer to them. Could be wrong. Okay, religious leaders from New York visit church headquarters. Uh, they see the heart of the church's welfare work and learn more about their family history. Um, <clears throat> now, this is interesting because welfare, that's kind of like a... It doesn't have so much to, it, I mean, it is based on spiritual principles and taking care of our fellow man and the poor. Um, but this is something that leaders across the world, you know, that are concerned about humanitarian things, um, which sometimes is a government function, sometimes is a function of um, private groups. But it's, it's interesting that they're talking about that. Okay, quote unquote, hearing is not like seeing. Yeah, that's true. Totally agree with that. Those words spoken Tuesday, Tuesday, let me zoom in so I can read it a little bit better. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> sorry. Those words spoken Thursday by Rabbi Joseph Podesnik of New York aptly describe why seven faith leaders from the Big Apple visited Utah on Wednesday and Thursday. They saw firsthand the beating heart of the welfare and humanitarian work of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. They learned more about their genealogy at the Family History Library. Uh, we were just talking about genealogy with Jojo, the joyous genealogist. Make sure to check her out. She has a really good personality. She's going to do great things. And uh, I would encourage everybody, uh, just in general, get into genealogy and family history. Now is the time to do it. Okay, going back here. Um, they met with they met with church leaders and they spoke at BYU BYU's annual religious freedom conference. Uh, quote, it's one of the great great moments in my life when I get to meet people who are so committed to the cause. Rabbi Potisnik said, uh, quote, it's easy to preach it, but people say you have to see a sermon. Uh, we've seen many sermons out here on this visit. Okay, here's a picture. This is Annette Bernard, Executive Director of Community Affairs of the Christian Cultural Center. I, I have no idea what that is. Uh, she, she tours Welfare Square. Uh, this is the Bishop Storehouse there. Um, Christian Cultural Center founder, Reverend A.R. Bernard left of Brooklyn, New York and Rabbi Joseph uh, Potisnik, right, of the New York, of New York Tour Welfare Square. Religious leaders. Uh, let's just kind of look at these. The rabbi meeting with members of the First Presidency. It would be so interesting to be there, to listen to it all, see the interactions, and and maybe see how this may uh, change perceptions of the church. You know, because uh, I've noticed in my life, like right after high school, I worked at a call center, and I noticed that over the phone, uh, people are a lot more daring in how they treat you than they would be in person. 
not to say that there aren't horrible customer service experiences in person, but I think it's a lot more frequent over the phone because you're just one more step removed from actually seeing that person in their entirety. And then it gets even worse when it comes to uh, the internet and all you are, all you're doing, all, the only way you're communicating is by um, messaging or like if you're on your phone and texting, that's like even worse. So you gain so much more information about a person <clears throat> and understand the reality of that person when you're actually in person with them. And you can see them, see their body language, feel their spirit. Um, so yeah, I think it's critical that all these people actually meet with church leaders. Uh, let's see, it doesn't say what that coin is, but it's some kind of coin, like a, you know, a token of friendship. But I have a bunch of coins from the military, by the way, that's like a, there's like a big thing in the military where you have these, um, coins and they're really cool. I have a little stand for them. Maybe I'll share a picture of, you know, what? I'll share a picture of that right now. Look at this. Check out. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I still have to take the picture. Um, check this out. The so the two in the back, <clears throat> the two big ones. Those are the ones that I actually earned for uh, doing a good job, doing a good job at my my job. The other ones I bought just so I had other coins to put in this rack, but also to remember my time in the army. But um, the top right one, that's the one that I'm the most proud of. It, it's when I was working in the uh, NBC room, which stands for Nuclear Biological Chemical. It's also known as the Seaburn Room, Chemical, uh, Biological, Radiological, Nuclear. It's basically the person in the unit. I, I was given the assignment to be the person in the unit in charge of the gas masks and the chemical stuff, you know, the chemical equipment. Um, that wasn't my official job in the army, but it was like an extra duty because like we didn't have anybody to do that at the time. Uh, but I, I got everything in really good working order. The the brigade commander, uh, a colonel came. He was inspecting the company. He was really happy uh, with my my NBC room and gave me this gigantic, awesome coin. Anyway, okay, so that's beside the point. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's probably what I guess that's probably similar to what's happening here, uh, just like a token of friendship uh yeah let's look at some more of these photos there's, there's a few more that looks like a catholic priest uh bishop dr victor a brown wright senior pastor of mount sinai united christian church united christian church in staten island and rabbi diana gerson left associate executive vice president of the new york board of rabbis um and I want to point out in my last, not my last video, two videos ago, we were talking about uh, Judaism. We were talking about language, how how the so many Jews throughout the world speak English and how I think that that's critical for what's going to happen during the millennium. We're going to have two world headquarters. Um, one person brought up, well, aren't the two headquarters, they're going to be close to each other because the continents are going to come together uh yes but language is still going to be critical just because like you get closer to each other doesn't mean that you understand we have mexico on the south uh, of the united states and unless you know spanish you, you know there's still the, a language barrier so i think it's critical that so many jews speak english almost half of jewry is in the united states okay so they obviously all speak English. And then based on what we read, it's required learning in Israel. And the majority of Israelis uh, speak English to some degree, but a lot of them speak it really well. It's it's fascinating. It, it's the Lord's hand. He's, he's coordinated all these things. So anyway, looking at this picture, looking at these rabbis, Diana, and then the other guy, um, these are essentially some of the main leaders I, I would assume here in the united states when it comes to judaism in the united states this is big this is big okay so right here they're learning about their family history so that's cool um rabbi joseph potisnik new york talks with elder kevin s hamilton 
Um, this is the Family History Library on Temple Square. Um, this is Reverend K or Q K, English left, uh, director of the Partnership Center of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Okay, so she must be. So she's a reverend, director of the Partnership Center of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. I don't really know a whole lot about that, but so I, I don't know. It sounds like maybe she might be a government employee. I'm not sure. Um, this is a family history department employee shows Monsignor Kevin Sullivan, executive director of Catholic Charities of the Archdiocese of New York, information about his family tree at the Family History Library. Okay, so here's a Catholic. Okay, then he goes to the beginning. Okay, Rabbi Potisnik, a senior rabbi and vice president of the New York City's Commission of Religious Leaders, was joined by four commission members. Uh, commission president and founder of the Christian Cultural Center in Brooklyn, Reverend A.R. Bernard, Reverend K. English, director of the Partnership Center of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, uh, Monsignor, uh, Kevin Sullivan, Executive Director of the Catholic Charities of the Arch Archdiocese, uh, sorry, Archdiocese of the of New York, and Bishop Dr. Victor A. Brown, Senior Pastor of Mount Sinai United Christian Church in Staten Island. The group was joined by Rabbi Diana Gerson, Associate uh, Associate Executive President, Vice President of the New York Board of Rabbis, and Annette Bernard, Executive Director of Community Affairs of the Christian Cultural Center. Okay, Welfare Square. At Welfare Square, the faith's largest concentration of facilities that benefit the poor, Reverend Bernard saw the source of the 40,000 pounds of food the Church of Jesus Christ gave uh, to his church in March 2022. Uh, that's interesting. Okay, quote, what impressed me most is the fact that you're not just engaged in distribution, but actually production, uh, Reverend Bernard said. That was intriguing. The dairy, the dairy farms, peaches, peanuts, grapes, cheese. I was just amazed. That's really cool. I, I wish, you know, I have like this fantasy of being a rancher, um, or maybe maybe a dairy farmer, but more of like a rancher. I love cattle. Anyway, that's just a side note. Uh, the Reverend also expressed admiration for the church's ethos of volunteerism. Uh, quote, the culture of missions that you've created that results in volunteers giving their time and their talent to a cause, I think is also amazing. Reverend Bernard said, the whole missions culture that you've created in the church, it speaks to what you're able to accomplish globally, end quote. Rabbi Gerson said the aroma of tomato sauce being produced at Welfare Square pointed her to a larger truth about solidarity. Quote, you can smell the sauce and it transport you to a different time in a different place that has absolutely nothing to do and everything to do with this moment. Rabbi Gerson said, uh, you realize the power of, of the emotion of this is hope, is faith, is God. It's bigger than all of us, and yet it connects us all together. The Family History Library. Uh, the visit to the Family History Library was, for many in the group, a beautiful revelation into their roots. Yeah, me and Joni were just talking about this, how uh, it, it's... It's such a big deal, and not just within church, but it's it brings you, helps you understand your identity, and it's it's amazing. Um, you know, the Gadianton robbers, the modern day seeker combinations, they want you to not have strong connections with your family. They don't want you to like feel a sense of belonging, identity. They want to isolate you. Basically, they want to isolate you. Um, family history works against that. So, uh, Reverend English had never known her maternal grandfather's birth date. Uh, he was a slave on a plantation. On Wednesday, Family History Department staff presented her with a handwritten document from an ancestor that had the names of her grandfather's children. Quote, I had no idea that visiting the Family History Library would put me on a journey to know so much more about my family. I'm at a point now 
where uh, I'm going to be able to dig deeper, and that's the joy in being able to create and preserve that online, pre preserve that online for my generations to come that can see that in real time. And that is really cool. So the one that we're talking about here, remember this lady, not her. Uh, let's go back this way. Her, right there. K English. So this is, this is the one that found that out. Um, you see, family history can also be missionary work because people, okay, you don't have to be a member of the church to get on to, we pulled up family search, right? And this is a shared tree. You don't create your own tree here. It's a shared uh, tree. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, when they did the Kansas, Oklahoma devotional for my area, <clears throat> excuse me, because I live in Kansas, the church basically donated, there There was this museum that went up in Oklahoma City for Native Americans. I can't remember the exact name of the museum, but they donated a room for, for family history so that uh, people visiting there could, um, I, I assume, get on to family search and look up their, their family history. <clears throat> this is a missionary, um, a potential missionary tool. Uh, family family search and uh, hopefully hopefully these people and it sounds like they did it seems like they were affected by being able to have access to that information and see just the good that the church does um, Monsignor Sullivan noticed the global nature of the records at the family history library this he said is a reminder of the need to work together for the good of the globe uh, quote, the world we live in is getting smaller. Collaborating in solidarity with other people <clears throat> whose cultures might be very different, whose religion might be very different, is really key to the future success and survival of the human race. And um, yeah, and it's going to be important when the millennium starts. It's going to be important. All right, so I don't think I'm going to read... Oh, wait, he says, I'm so, I'm, okay, M maybe I'll read this paragraph. Um, in our time of division, Bishop Brown said, it is refreshing to see institutions such as the Church of Jesus Christ that are committed to serving the poor and bringing people together. Quote, this truly is the, the incarnated reality of the mission and spirit of Jesus Christ. In this dispensation, our role and task and responsibility is that of being the hands and feet of Jesus. We are called to be instruments of service. And so we have not uh, been saved. We have not been saved to sit. We've been saved to serve. And that's what we should be doing. And what I saw this morning is an incarnation of the mission of Jesus Christ on a level I've never seen it before. <laughs> that's really flattering. He says, I'm so incredibly blown away. Wow. That, that is a power statement. Who was that? That's it. Let's, let's find him. Bishop Brown. Was it this guy? No, this is. No, it, I, it was that one guy that I, I was, that's wearing like the Roman collar. Come on. Right, this guy right here. I think this is him. Yeah. Bishop Dr. Bi okay. Bishop Dr. Victor A. Brown. Okay, so this is the one that said that he was blown away by what the church is doing. Wow. Uh, BYU Religious Freedom Conference. Do I want to read that? No. Okay. Uh, Rabbi Potisnik, whose association with, with church leaders began in 2009, Thank them for the opportunity to deepen their relationship. So he's been he's been familiar with the church for a while, but um, wow. Okay, so this is really cool. Reaching out, building more and more bridges or bridges that already exist are being strengthened. Um, we're showing what the church is doing and potentially, uh, I don't know, potentially establishing relationships for the millennium for the, the first part of the millennium so that things run smoothly, so that there's cooperation, so that 
um, everything will work uh, in the political government of Christ once that's established. And hopefully for these individuals, they'll feel the spirit and at some point, um, you know, accept the gospel, make covenants, um, and join the church. It, it may not happen now, maybe it could, or maybe it'll happen during the millennium, but I'm sure that they've, it seems like they've all been very touched uh, by this visit. So it's a really good thing. Okay, so that's gonna be it for this one. Uh, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it. Leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Uh, also make sure to share it and I'll talk to you guys later.